everyone. I'm Gerard Scarpacy, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. We've got a, a special edition of Professionals Who Practice, sponsored by our good friends at Pivot Point International. We uh, have our good friend Jay Mahmood in town. Hello, everyone. And Jay is one of my favorite technical precision cutting educators. And we got to talking the other day about how he conducts his classes and how he kind of keeps on top of his game, utilizing great mannequins as part of the education. So we'll talk about that a little bit, but really what we want to do is show you this incredible graduated bob lesson from one of the masters in haircutting. Fantastic. Jay, say hello to I'm the flattered. audience. Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. It's always such a pleasure to hang out with you guys. I'm gonna jump straight in. We want this to be as interactive as possible. Of course, reach out with your questions. I've sectioned out the nape area, really just from the occipital bone on either side, just in the interest of time. Make sure you clip this hair out of the way nice and clean. Now within this zone here, I'm going to start to graduate. So my fingers are going to be angled in shorter at the nape and the length is going to be longer towards the top. And I'm actually going to pivot my sections. Um, and as I start to cut, I'm going to start to explain why I'm pivoting and what that's going to help me achieve. Awesome. Lots of love coming in, Jay. Again, lots of people are joining us, so I want to give shout outs to everyone. Hello from New York City, Gerard Scarpacy, co founder of the Hairbrain Community. We're here today with Jay Mahmood, one of the hands down best precision educators and precision haircutters I've had the pleasure of working with. He was in town doing a course, and we'll talk about that. And I said, hey, this is a great opportunity to uh, get you in the studio here for our pivot point. Professionals Who Practice series, which is what we do here. This is our 15th one where we work with top educators, top professionals, and show how even at the pinnacle of your career, you can still use incredible mannequins and incredible tripods to keep training yourself and to also train others. So the whole lesson today is about the graduated ball. We'd love to hear your questions, your connections uh, with Jay, and I'll be reading those questions here and giving the shout out. So take it away, Jay. Thank you very much. And just I just want to touch on something you said there. We want this to be as interactive as possible. So please ask lots and lots of questions. We are here for you. And to be honest, it just makes it more exciting as well when we got lots of questions in. So I'm gonna jump straight in from an education point of view um, and talk to you about what I'm doing. So I started taking pivoting sections. Now sometimes when people are doing this haircut, they take diagonal sections and they sometimes go slightly higher each time and then sometimes you see people pivoting like I'm doing. Now, neither of them ways are wrong, but they each do something very slightly different. If, for example, you go up the head each time with diagonal sections, you're going to progress up the head much quicker, and this will give you a much steeper, flatter shape. But in this case, um, I'm pivoting my sections, meaning they're going from one point. So even though I'm working up the head, I'm actually holding on to the weight. So this is really good if you may have a problem, say, for example, going too short towards the crown, you might want to try this out um, as this can help you to keep a bit more length and weight as you're working up the crown. Lots of your friends are tuning in, Jay. We've got Jacintha McGowan watching from Ireland. Yes. Hello. Jahari Coop watching from Bristol, UK. Yeah. Uh, George uh, Istropoulos watching from Greece. Our buddy Ivan Duda is watching from hey. Croatia. Amazing. It's a totally international group, guys. Let us know where you're watching from. So far, it's been really international. Uh, we've got Greece. We've got uh, Anakos watching from Portugal. Lots of love. And now we did have a great first question that came in here. Yeah. Uh, it was about tension. Can you talk about yes, tension when doing graduation? Tension. And I will find who asked that. There's so many questions coming Absolutely. in and trying to keep up. That's a great question, actually, with regard to tension, because especially in the area that I'm working in, in the nape area, this is, as we know, where the skin is really, really loose in some cases. And um, we have to be really careful not to stretch the hair and stretch the skin too much because that's going to have a direct effect on the cleanliness of your cutting lines. Now, it doesn't matter how clean they look here, but if you're pulling the roots too much and you're pulling the skin, as soon as you let go and the skin relaxes again, your cutting line is no longer clean. So just keep a really even, consistent tension. I try to just use the tension of the comb when I'm cutting and try to um, make sure that the skin doesn't move and that way you should be good. Well, that was a great question coming in from Rihanna McGowan. Thank you for that question. Guys, we're with one of the best technical educators that I've had the pleasure of working with. So if you've got any great questions about technical haircutting, graduation, precision cutting, this is the opportunity. Thank you, Gerard.
Now, Jay, I want you to get back into your lesson here, but I know you were also in town for the past couple of days here in New York City teaching yeah. and utilizing pivot point mannequins. Absolutely. I wanted yeah. you to talk a little bit about taking a hands-on class with you, how you guys utilize the mannequins, and uh, are you still practicing at home on your own when you come up with a new idea? Yes, exactly. I'll answer all of them. First of all, with regards to using mannequins, this is something I get asked a lot. Um, do I like using mannequins? Because in my um, earlier stages of my career, we always worked on live models traditionally. Um, but I think the advantage of having mannequins and why I like to work with them, because, you know, it's, it's nice if you're teaching a class a specific subject, for example, Everybody, you know, has the same hair to start with. Mannequins aren't really problematic as well in the sense that they need to get up and leave halfway through the work session. You don't have to worry about them not turning up, etc. And if you're worried about, you know, the standard of the mannequin, do you actually learn from them? Believe me, the mannequins now, the quality of the hair, is just as good as cutting a real person, if not better. Yeah, the pivot point <laughs> mannequins, you know, the, yeah. the way that the hair is implanted into the head, yeah. um, it's, it's a beautiful creation. I'm going to tell you some things you might not even know about it, and then we'll get back to the lesson. Uh -huh. Pivot Point is a company that has um, been certified as an ethical corporation. Yeah. So uh, in the countries where they source the hair and make the mannequins, they actually pay a fair living wage to all the employees. So mm -hmm. you have uh, no child labor, yeah. no, no one that's basically paid below a living standard, and yeah. they've been certified. I think it's called, a, a, I forget the exact name, ESA 800 or something. Oh, nice. But it's just something good to know that, you know, we're working on the hair, and lots of times hair can be sourced in very unethical ways. Yeah. I'll let you guys learn about that for yourself, but not in this case. Let's Amazing. get back to this incredible education. Yeah. So we had some questions about body positioning. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how you think about your body position when you're doing graduated bobs? I think it's really, really important, just generally, to be mindful of your body position. I do want to point out, however, when you're demonstrating, you always have to be respectful of the view, so it may not be exactly how you would cut it. But I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to keep it as realistic as possible. I personally like to stand, when I do this side, because I'm right-handed, I tend to come over slightly. But the danger with that is you don't want to round the hair off by pulling it out. So just might be mindful to pull the hair back. Um, just so um, you're catching up at home, I just want to talk about my shape here, what I'm actually creating technically. My shape vertically is triangular, okay, so it's working from shorter to longer. But then if we check it this way, it's going to be square, so it's going to be longer behind the ears. Alright, so this way it's square. I'm achieving that through over direction. I'm just pulling the hair slightly back each time and making sure we build length and weight behind the ears. And the reason we're doing that is because eventually that's going to help to build length towards the front. I just want to point out also, if you notice the angle of my sections, my fingers started vertically, didn't they? Because my sections were quite steep, my fingers were almost vertical, giving me a really nice flat guide. And through pivoting, they've started to go more towards horizontal. And now I'm actually pulling down. And um, very quickly, what that is, is when your fingers are more towards vertical, your shape that you're cutting is becoming steeper. And as your fingers go more towards horizontal, it gives you an opportunity to start to pull down and that's what I'm doing now. I'm starting to build length and weight very quickly um, because we don't want the hair, the shape to go too steep. Now w the way that the sections are kind of changing each time and getting uh, more diagonal. Does that help in any way to build the weight? Can you explain the whole theory again with sectioning this? Yeah. First off, how many different ways are there to cut a graduated bob? Probably a million, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I don't know all of them. I'm not going to claim to. This is, this is, to be honest, if you do it a slightly different way, it's not to say that it's wrong, like Gerard just said, but this is my way. I think it works for me. Um, I'm going to try to give you loads of tips on it. And of course, you'll see the outcome as well. So again, so if I started off vertically and my fingers were flatter, that's because I want the shape to tuck in and I want a lot of control over what that profile looks like. And then as my fingers are going more towards horizontal, I have in mind the sort of length I want to end up with as I'm approaching the top. Okay, so I'm going to cross-check. This is a really good time. Yeah, there was a question taken. from uh, Rihanna about how you cross-check yeah. a shape like this. So okay, that's a so great time. We cut from the back working forwards. To cross-check, we're going to go from the front towards the back. Now, the first thing we need to understand when we're cross-checking is we have to understand our expanded shape. So at the moment, it would be doing this. Okay, it's horizontally square. 
and it's vertically triangle, so we should have this. Simply, when you cross-check, you just pull your fingers back into that position, and you, you, you won't get lost. Whereas sometimes, if you're just guessing, you're going to start to change your shape. So I'm going to come there this way. And if you were un, unclear that it's meant to be kind of square, you might lose that corner behind the ear. So right. this is important that I'm you bring this, this back. right back, right? right there. If anything, we're just going to dust if you need to do anything, okay? You shouldn't really need to cut, cut a huge amount off if you're taking sections as patiently as I was. Okay. And if someone does see a lot to cut off, what would you recommend they do? Well, if it's lots, I'd say go back through the original technique. Because at the end of the day, if you start to fix a shape um, through cross-checking, you're not, in the long term, you're not really going to improve on your technique. You know, and then answering the second part of your question earlier on, do I still practice? Of course, I'm always practicing. In fact, this is why I've um, started to enjoy cutting mannequins so much, because at home I've got a stand, I've got a stand and I cut mannequins if, if I don't have... Um, time to cut models or clients, you know. You can yeah. never get too much practice. You can ask uh, Kelly, who's behind the phone, if we do that at my house. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I've got a whole room full of mannequins and tripods. We were just with our buddy Michael Polsonelli. He's also got a room yeah. out in his house. So it is something that we find. It's like you. the more of a master you are, the more you practice. I haven't met anyone that's really great and passionate about it is like, oh, no, I don't need to practice. Like, Or, you know, back to the to the mannequin thing as well. It's like... The freedom of being able to Sunday morning, you're drinking your tea and you come up with an idea. Yeah. You might not be able to ring up a model and have her come over to your house and try it out. But if you're someone who's practicing, you've got a collection of mannequins, which I do and I'm sure you do. Yeah. You pull one down and you try it out. Absolutely. And then you're also not afraid to make a mistake because that's how you can discover something totally new. Okay, this is going off just slightly, but recently um, I was cutting hair at home on a mannequin. And in the water spray bottle, I, I put a couple of pumps of conditioner. I cut the shapes, let them dry. And the next morning when I woke up, because I didn't blow dry them, they had this really beautiful texture. <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm saying too much now <laughs> about what I get up to. This is how exciting my life is. Right, guys, so I cross-check this zone. Everything's nice and clean. And just to help me sleep at night, one thing I like to do, I've cross-checked both sides, but also what you can do... And I'm, I'm a really firm believer in this. If you check more while the shape is wet, when you get to the end, you won't really need to do too much. So I'm also going to go through horizontally and make sure through the center that the shape is nice and clean. Okay? Any questions coming? Yeah, in? this is a great one. This is a perfect time to capture it. Milos is, is wondering, when you cut, do you go past the second knuckle? Can you show how, where you stop cutting, how deep yeah. you cut? Do you know what? If I'm honest, and this might sound controversial, but... To be honest, I don't worry too much about that because I like to think at this stage of my career I can control my tension fairly well. Um, and then you, you're always going to get people saying, oh, you're no good at cutting hair because you've got a gap between your fingers there. How many times have we heard that before? A lot. I'm sorry, but isn't everybody supposed to have a gap there? I don't have one. You know? <laughs> no, my fingers are I mean, so chubby. Look, look at the difference. Whoa! <laughs> I take that back. Enjoy that statement. I was going to say, because if you think about the distance between the two knuckles, you're always going to have some release of tension. But I think overall, if you have a good control of tension over time, um, you shouldn't really need to worry about that but too much. You're absolutely right. Most people do have one, but I've got like these little sausages. I've never seen anything like this. Check this out. Like, no <laughs> I've never seen anything so like So I can that. get pretty even tension almost from Jesus. the fingertip all the way through. I thought I had good fingers to yeah. cut. Yours are amazing. Hey, Tim, Tim has the same. Tim Hartley, our old friend. I don't think he's oh, got any yeah. gaps in his fingers either. Right, guys. What we're going to do now, we're moving on to the next stage. The reason I took a lot of time in this area, because this is so important, because everything is going to be built on top of this, okay? So again, for those of you who are joining us now, the shape is vertically triangle, horizontally square, okay? We achieve this by pivoting our sections. And another quick tip I'll give you, you see this line here where your fingers kind of come together, that line? If that, if that line sort of mirrors the sections, your fingers won't get lost. Because you can see now, my last section was there, you'll notice my finger position was like that. So initially, your fingers, get them to follow your sections, and that makes it a lot easier. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to work up parallel, one, two, roughly three, so I'm in line with the top of the ear. I'm going to use this square shape as my guide, and I'm just going to lift 
a tiny bit between sections. We've got a great question from uh, Delphia Brotherton about what you do with the heads when you're finished cutting hair. I want to say a little bit about that. Um, this haircut, this is probably the third haircut on this mannequin. It was long layered at one point, and then a long bob, and then you go into a graduated bob, or then a shorter haircut. So typically, if you plan it out, you should be able to get, I think, at least at minimum three haircuts, yeah, up to five, especially if you go into barbering and clipper cutting and, and stuff like that. So don't be wasteful, you know? Um, you can plan it out from a long lesson all the way down to a short lesson. Hopefully you can get about five cuts out of it. Now what you do when you're done with it, that's entirely up to you. I've seen some really creative ones where people have turned them into flower planters. That's amazing. I know I have a good friend in Hawaii and they have a problem with wild boars. And she puts all the mannequins with, uh, and human, throws human hair in her garden and it keeps the boars away because they see the people. But I'm sure if anybody else has any creative ways of using the mannequins when they're done, at the very least, they're uh, totally, you can recycle them and they should be recycled properly. Um, something to think about. And yeah, you touched on an interesting point. Just because they're um, female mannequins, it doesn't mean you can't practice your barbering on them afterwards. You know? You Absolutely. Could always, you could always take them right down. And even practices overcome. Okay, right. guys, so this is progressing nicely. Um, the reason I say that is you'll notice I'm um, continually combing the hair down to assess the shape. And one thing I want to point out, now you'll notice the hairline has become a lot wider. In, initially in the nape it's like this and it starts to go outwards. So now all I'm going to do is centre, side, side, check the balance, move on. And that's a really good way of kind of keeping in control of your shape. Got a shout out from our good buddy, Josh LaMonica. Yes, Looking hey, forward Josh. to seeing Josh back in the States in 2019 so we can have some great educational experiences with him. Good friend of mine. Fantastic guy. Do you, do you sometimes think about, now with this haircut, the graduated bob? Yeah. Um, and versus bob with graduation. Is that something that you think about? Yeah. And also, like to me, when I do a classic graduated bob, yeah. I think of the part you're in now as the bob part. It's like yeah. you did the graduated part. Yeah. Now you're kind of laying the bob on top of the graduation. Yeah. Do you think in a similar way, different way? Let's talk about that. Absolutely. I think it's to do with, if we're really going to think about it, technically you're doing the same thing, right? Sections could be similar. You're using elevation. The only difference is how much weight you keep in the outline, mm -hmm. isn't it, really? With the, with the bob with graduation, it's essentially a heavy line, a bob, and then you start to knock the corner off internally to graduate it. And Where here, you'll expose a little bit more of the natural hairline in the nape. Absolutely, yeah. And, exactly. and kind of rise up to meet the bob line by the yeah, jaw. Exactly. They're both equally beautiful. One's just a lot heavier. It's just like a never-ending discussion and dialogue about the language. Well, Some people use it, I, to me, Sorry. just because of the background and the way that I've said it since the 90s, like, they're different things, although they can be cut the same way. Yeah. And it, as you said, it's about the outline. Is there an outline that goes all the way through or not? And I, I've given up trying to be fanatical about it because there's so many different ways to, to talk about it, which is what makes our industry incredible. Exactly. Right, guys, keep the questions coming in. I a lot really of love coming in. Whitney Haynes says she met Whitney, you years ago you and you're Whitney. crazy talented. So happy to see oh, this. She's a lovely girl, actually. It's been a long time. Massimo Ayodici says Jay Mahmood is the best. How are you, Massimo? Um, we have a lot of love coming in. Amazing. Milos is w who asked about the tension in the fingers, and he's, he says he has the whole between his uh, third and fourth. <laughs> Don't worry, my man, you're not alone. Our buddy Milo uh, Maximovich, uh, he says rock on Jay. Thank you. Now, lots of people are asking, you know, just in the most simplest terms, is this the 45 degree cut? What does that That's mean to really you? That's a good point. To be honest, guys, with this, this, again, I always say things, and I, believe me, at the start of it, I don't want to offend anybody. I just want to challenge the way you're thinking, okay? Now, just think about Think about this, it's, it's almost like if you say 45 degrees and 90 degrees, we hear this term a lot. Now it's almost implying that there's only two haircuts you can ever do on hair, right? 45 degrees or 90 degrees. Now just relate that for one moment, relate that in architecture, okay? If you were building a city and you were making buildings and they all only had two angles, how boring would your city look? Do you know what I mean? So it's... it's you can't really say that hair cutting is just about 45 de degrees, etc. And in doing so, has anybody ever come up to your haircut and checked it and said, this isn't 45 degrees, this is 47? You know, the point I'm trying to make is, 
try not to think about numbers and actually think more about individuality. You know, are you keeping too much weight or are you taking too much weight away, etc. So try not to become obsessed with numbers. Forgive me if I come across rude. That's really not my intention. I, I think it's not rude. It's just um, uh, showing another perspective of thinking about it. I think... Yeah. You know, un unfortunately, in a craft, very often people have to learn something really, really basic at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, in a cosmetology textbook, it's very simple to say, hey, I'm going to show you zero, 90, and 45. Yeah. Um, but then it's about going beyond that. And that's where the practicing comes in. Exactly. You know, I'm thinking about, you know, what's my weight distribution on this unique head shape. Exactly. So, guys, we're coming to uh, an area that I like to call like the transition area in the, um, in the haircut, because you're going from one technique into another, okay? So in the back, as we know, we've got graduation, and graduation, as we know, is building weight, and it's when you're working from shorter to longer as you work up the head. So you can see the length here is longer, and it's shorter in at the nape. And what that's achieving, and what I'm hoping to achieve, is a real natural kind of fullness in the shape. So from the graduation in the back, we want to create a line in the front, Okay, so I've purposely stopped at the ear, and the reason why I stop at the ear, you'll notice before I've come into the side, I check the balance on both sides. That's the key area to check your balance, and once you've done that, and you're happy with the balance, extend the section into the side, like so. Okay, you'll notice I'm trying to work as clean as possible, all right, keep the hair groomed, um, and when you're actually sectioning the side, actually come and stand in the front. You can see I'm using the tight side of the comb, and I'm combing the hair flat on the head. This is often referred to as grooming the hair in the industry. You'll notice, just like a ponytail, pull the hair with a bit of tension and get your clip in nice and tight and also pull the hair on the way out and that will keep it really nice and clean. Now, let's go into this because this is a really, really important lesson. So as I said, the difference between the two techniques here with graduation and a line. Graduation has elevation, okay, so you lift the hair. And with a line, you don't lift the hair. You comb the hair straight down. Okay, so if you want to transition smoothly where your graduation starts to decrease and disappears into a line, you want to gradually lower your elevation. So I simply break it into three parts. One, two, behind the ear, and three. And all I do with my elevation is higher, lower, and low. And this should help you with that transition. So let's, um, let's get straight into that. Again, keep the questions coming. This is an area that is quite tricky, so I'm sure lots of you guys have questions at home. Please don't be shy. We're all friends. So lots of love coming in. Uh, your buddy Sasho Kremich over in London, he, hey, he wants to carry on the degrees discussion. Oh, that's, yeah. oh, oh. It's a big oh, discussion, okay. you know. Let's do it. Let's do uh, it. He, you know, uh, he's just talking about how you can only really stick to degrees on a flat surface, you know. And since the head is a curved surface, it's always changing. And, yeah. you know, I think like what we were saying, it's a great place to start off learning. But yeah. as you want to broaden your spectrum, you have to broaden your perspective. Um, this part of this particular haircut, I think people find really challenging. It's because even if they sit the nape in nice and the graduation's looking good, this yeah. is where they could start to get like steppy. Yeah, exactly. So how do you avoid, you know, getting a hard, hard step or do you sometimes want a hard line? Mm -hmm. and What's can you your thought there? And can you define what you mean by step? Absolutely. Um, first of all, um, let's define step and we'll work back from that. Step is basically when you just start to build weight all of a sudden and you just get a really solid line. A weight line, a exactly. hard line. Yeah. Now, personally, I think that um, weight lines are an inconsistency in your elevation. You know, If it just abruptly comes to a stop, you're going to start to build weight very quickly. So I would say just continue to use gradual elevation. And um, it's really funny because when I was doing my training and we always asked our teachers, how do you know how much to elevate? They'd all say the same thing. They'd all say, you feel it. And you'd be like, okay. You don't feel anything. Okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's more like a visual assessment, isn't it? You'll notice, as I keep saying, I keep combing the hair down to assess it. I'm not running my hands through the hair after I cut it. I'm continually combing it down to assess it. So just um, keep gradually lifting. You'll notice I'm moving the head position as well. All right, so I'm going to break it into three parts again. Here, higher. And you'll notice also that I'm combing from the top. This is going to build length and weight towards the crown. Okay, I'm combing you, that into place. 
Do you That's rotate right. your hand in a little bit as you go forward as well? Like, is your knuckle literally lower than your fingertips, or are they on the same plane? It is, actually, yeah. You'll notice that I'm letting my section... It's slightly diagonal, isn't it? I'm letting my section guide my finger and again that's helping me to sort of transition from graduation into a line you know side note for me is uh you know most of the time i'm cutting more freehand and dry and razor cutting but every once in a while when i feel like i'm getting kind of unmoored mm -hmm. in my technique i'll whip out one of these mannequins and do a classic graduated bob and there's yeah. quite a few different ways to do it you know approach wise but there's nothing that'll get you back to basics um, and clarity like what you're doing right here. Absolutely, absolutely. This is honestly one of my favorite haircuts to do. And the reason I say that is because I think, I think when I look back in my career, um, when I learned to cut a graduated bob well, that's when I thought now I can cut hair. That's absolutely, you know, you know for, for those who've had the type of training that Jay and I had from Vidal Sassoon, that's kind of like the yardstick, the measurer, is you know you learn your bob and you learn some basic layers but when you get to that graduated bob and everybody struggles with it because it's deceptively simple to be able to sit it in short and still not build a step but still have the, the curvature beautiful beautiful technique if you're just joining us because i can see lots of people are joining now i'm gerard scarpacey co-founder of the harebrain community we're here in new york city with our good friend jay mamoud who's in town teaching a three day was it a three day class Correct, yeah. which yeah. i'd love for you to talk about your education yeah. um and we thought what a great opportunity to pull him in the studio and do part of our professionals who practice series I visited his class this week and I noticed they were working with Erica Mannequins from Pivot yeah. Point. Today you're working with the Elise. I don't know if you've worked with Elise before. Is this your first time meeting uh, Elise? It is, and do you know what? She's equally as beautiful as Erica. I yeah. have to say. They're all, they're all sisters. Born. Yeah. Yeah. The nice thing about this one to me is the hair color is a little bit lighter yeah. and there's a mixture of uh, blonder and kind of medium brown hair. Nice. So it's great for color. And it just as a hair cutter, you don't always want to put your shapes on dark hair. Yeah. Um, and if you look, if you go to pivotpointshop.com you'll see that there's a whole kind of variety from quite blonde all the way down to quite dark and then there's different head shapes this head shape or head size is a smaller head shape and again what's nice about that and that's what you used in your class this week the Erica mm -hmm. you can practice all the same sections the whole technique but it doesn't take quite so long because the head is smaller so you, what Jay's doing here is graduated Bob the head is bigger it actually there's it takes more time so that doesn't always necessarily make for the best learning uh, session. So sometimes being able to use a smaller head, learn the same haircut but on a smaller head. And I'll let you talk about that. Talk about your class this week. Yeah, I've had an amazing, uh, had an amazing uh, few days in my class. We've done a three-day precision cutting class. And um, we just cut all the classic shapes. Well, not all of them, but purely classic shapes. Um, and we had a great time. It was really about building confidence. Because um, what I find, with the greatest respect, a lot of hairdressers, they cut hair, but we don't always fully understand what we're doing. You know, we do things because it feels right or because someone has shown us a certain way of doing something. And I think over time, we can start to become quite repetitive in, um, in our haircuts. We do the same one or two haircuts. And so this was a real confidence builder and just um, getting people to step out of their comfort zone, you know? So lots of people, uh, quite a few, but I'm gonna, I'll, I'll call out um, Tom Robbins, are asking, you know, when you're working around the side, yeah. Jay, how do you avoid getting any type of a hole yeah. uh, in, in the line, in very the connection? Good, very good question. Can I quickly answer that? Yes, please. Um, that's a really good question. You have to be mindful about getting a hole. And a lot of the time, people, um, they worry so much about tapping over the ear, but I believe that that's the least of your worries going into the side. I think. A lot of the time we actually get a hole behind the ear, you know, and the reason for that is if we have a look, is this is where there's a big change in the weight. You'll notice that everybody, everybody's hairline is a lot lower and this is where it very quickly goes up. So this is where we can get a hole if we're not careful. In this case, how I'm avoiding a hole, and you'll see as I work forwards, is I'm managing my, um, my elevation and my over direction. So not only am I bringing the hair down, but I'm also pulling back slightly, and what that's doing is that's keeping sufficient weight. So just walk through with me as I do this, and you'll see how I'm doing it. Again, if you're just joining us, I'm breaking it into three parts. We're going from graduation into, um, into a line. What you can do to break it down in your mind, if there's lots of hair, just section it here by the ear, okay? And then 
that kind of breaks it down in your mind. So now you've got the back and behind the ear. All right. Notice I'm working as clean as possible. I'm trying to. I hope it looks like that at home. It certainly does. Everyone <laughs> is, you know, Good. definitely complimentary of your technique. Good. Good. Okay. So nice clean cutting line there. I'm combing it down. At no point am I doing this, ladies and gents. I'm not doing any of that. Okay. Please try it does look good do. when you do that. It does. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I might start doing it. Yeah. Okay. Just comb it down, and you'll see. Um, you'll see. I'm not really getting a weight line, am I? Because only through combing it down and assessing it, I'm um, I'm able to tell if my weight is being built up um, consistently. Okay. And then behind the ear here, again, nice and clean. All right. Nice consistent tension. And you'll notice that my, set, my fingers are angling very slightly downwards. All right, and then from here, that point that I end up with, I'm going to adjust the head position. You'll notice I'm moving the head position a lot as well, yeah, because you're being respective of the, um, the natural fall. And then I'm turning into a line. Now, very quickly here, you can cut a triangular line if you want to. It's just down to personal preference and suitability. In this case, I'm cutting a square line externally i just think it looks really cool well here's a blast from the past that's going to really date me i have to jump in on this one lisa jouet hello from one of gerard's vidal sassoon classic students from 1996. No <laughs> you let me model and gave me a great haircut i will try to find a photo if you do oh, please wow. tag me on instagram it's at gerard s-c-a-r-p-a-c-i or you can um Always tag Hairbrain Official. We'd love to see that picture from 1980. What were you doing in 1996? 1996. Oh, oh my gosh. I, I was teaching school. classic <laughs> haircutting. Uh, if you're just joining us, that's what we're here for. Jay and I are both people that love haircutting, and he's, he's been a great friend for many years. Um, and we had this opportunity to um, present a professionals who practice, which is really what I think all great hairdressers, you've never learned everything, you've never mastered everything. Yeah. I can tell you by the end of this haircut, Jay's going to be better than he was before this haircut. I hope so. Even if it's a thousandth <laughs> of a degree, every time that you so. practice, you should get better and stronger. Yeah. And a great way to do that and alleviate a lot of the challenges is to work with great mannequins. You know, sometimes you just want to cut hair for your own self, you know? to explain something and to try something and to learn something. And that's where these great pivot point mannequins come in. So let's get back into this incredible education with Jay Mahmood. Okay guys, so I'm coming up towards my last section. The next one's my last one here on the side. And I'm just, you know, here's the thing. The key to achieving success in your haircut is consistency. You know, if you're working systematically and the shape is coming together, remain consistent in every section. You know, keep it, keep the sections the same thickness, keep the same body position, the same hand position, etc. And you'll notice that it just gives you that much more control. I know it sounds really, really obvious, but sometimes as hairdressers in the salon, there's so much going on that we can kind of get distracted. So the key is consistency. Yeah, remain consistent and it makes it a hundred times easier. One thing you'll notice is when I'm working, I keep spraying the hair. This is very important to the way that I like to work because I believe not only does it give me a consistent tension on the hair when I'm cutting, but it also helps me to keep the sections um, as clean as I possibly can. So you don't let, you don't just let it go wet to dry. You're saying you like the same exact amount of dampness in every section that you cut. Yeah. It depends. If I'm working with textured hair, then I might work it. I actually quite like to work it wet to dry because yeah. I love textured hair. In this case, I know I'm going to blow dry it smooth, um, so I just want to keep it nice and wet. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, texture does play a part as well. Again, lots of, lots of love coming in. Claire Connell says, thank you so much. Pleasure. pleasure. Um, George uh, Lastropoulos uh, from Greece, I think, I would yes, imagine, imagine, is so. asking you know, why you chose to work a little bit more horizontal with your sections on this, as opposed to, I would imagine, kind of diagonal forward or what A-line or triangular. Yeah, very good. Actually, what I'll do is, um, you'll notice, guys, sometimes when people do the back, when they do the graduation, sometimes people cut the whole back with vertical sections. Yeah. Now, the danger with that is, unless you've got very very good control over your vertical shape with your cutting line um, there's a big chance that you can start to flatten the shape too much or you can start to get holes behind the ears so um, answering George's question why I'm working horizontally because George if my section is horizontal 
I'm likely going to come from the top or from the underneath. I chose to come from the top, and what that's doing is it's helping me to pull down, my friend. So you can see we've built a nice amount of weight in this shape, and that's really just helped me to manage the weight. It's helped me and to keep enough weight in the shape. In your mind's eye, you're already kind of imagining how you're going to refine the hairline. I see you've left yeah. a lot there to work with, obviously, deliberately, yeah. when you started. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes yeah. people cut that in very, very tight right from the beginning. Yeah, see, I could, I could have jumped in really yeah. excited and cut it, but I'd rather kind of cut the shape and then refine that afterwards before blow-drying. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes people blow-dry the shape and then cut the outline. I like to cut it in wet because it helps me to visualise um, what I'm... Um, visualize my shape basically. So you brought up another interesting point when you say sometimes people cut the, the back of a graduation all vertically and I think yeah. in my experience having worked with lots of different methodologies, mm -hmm. some methodologies they like to teach that you can only graduate consistently with like your knuckles down, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Where that works, that can work vertically, but once you start pivoting and using different diagonals yeah. it doesn't work, which leads us into the way you're going to hold this different from the other side. And I'm sure you get this question a lot, like, yeah. well, you're holding it this way over here and this way over here. Yeah. So I want you to talk about hand position. Absolutely. And, you know, have you run into that where there are people that, I'm not going to jump in front of the camera, but where they kind of feel like the only way to do it consistently is all that way. And then you start to throw in a diagonal and it, it kind of becomes impossible. I think the danger with that is if, if you want quite an extreme angle, for example, if you want to go really fitted and you want to keep a lot of length, this is not comfortable. This is really not comfortable. Yeah. And you'll be able to do one side, but then when you go on to the other side, you're going to find it challenging. Well, what you find that people end up doing is to come overhand, oh to cut this way. Just Have you seen that? With the greatest respect to everybody yeah. who may do that, I'm not saying it's wrong. I promise I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's more difficult. You know, hair cutting is hard enough. Yeah, you want to try to kind of make it as easy as possible. So I'm going to try to keep cutting as I'm talking. I'm now going to go this way. And I'll try to give you guys the best view as possible. Is that okay for you, Kelly? I'm what good over here. Saying? All good. Right, guys. So um, it's really important. Not only am I going to continue to use the guide from the underneath, but I've actually got two guides now. I've also got the other side that I can check it against. So we're going to do the same thing. Now, this is the stage of a haircut where hairdressers always um, make mistakes when they go into the second side because by now we can kind of switch off, Okay. So I'm reminding myself exactly what I did on the previous side, okay? After the ear, I extended my section into the side, okay? And again, I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna step in front of you for one second. Um, I'm gonna break it down um, in three stages again, okay? Just get this nice and clean. Okay, in the meantime, guys, um, please, while we're talking, please keep the questions coming so that when we stop talking, we can answer your questions. Katrina Trevena says, hi, from Cornwall, England. I got a nice compliment from Jacynthia yeah. uh, saying that I lost a lot of weight and I look great. It's actually just the cut of the shirt. No, do you know I what? haven't you lost do. any weight in a while. <laughs> you do. Thank you. I'll take the compliment. But it is. The cut of the shirt really helps. I'm going I'm to take it to a tailor and get all, the, all my shirts made exactly <laughs> like this one. And I will look for some more questions while you keep people, catch people up on the side. Fantastic. Right, guys. So again... I'm starting to gradually lower my elevation here, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the graduation to decrease and um, this will help me form my line. Again, I'm adjusting the head position as I work into the sides and I'm reminding myself that my line through the side um, had a bit more of a squarer kind of feeling, okay? A lot of people are benefiting from that kind of three-section concept and understanding yeah. your elevation. Sometimes we used to say it's almost like a slide, you know, like you start from the highest point and you slide down into the jawline. Yeah, just practice it. You know, the great thing about the talking of mannequins, if you follow the HP series, my advice to you is get a mannequin and next time the next haircut's on, go through it with the artist. That would be a really good way to practice. You know, well. Jay, I can take it even one step further than that because after these are done, yeah. they live in our library forever. Oh, wow. So some people still don't know this, but if you go to the Hairbrain page on Facebook, either on your mobile or on desktop, you'll find a little button or a little somewhere where it says videos. Click on videos, and all this is cataloged in a library. And then after they're filmed, you can actually fast forward, rewind, pause, fast forward, rewind, pause. You can actually tag the educator and ask a question and they'll get a, they'll get a message in their inbox. Amazing. So just something to think about. We've got over 325 of these. We've done, this is our 15th one specifically on mannequins for Pivot Point, mm -hmm. uh, the Professionals Who Practice series. 
And that's a great one where you can see what mannequin was used, whether it be color, styling, and we've used kind of the whole range. I think we've used probably every mannequin is maybe 15 or 18 different types of mannequins. Amazing. Um, and you can go ahead and practice along with that. So check out the Pivot Point shop, check out all this great education, the professionals who practice series, and learn along. So hold on, I was just struck by a thought. If this, um, if this doesn't come out very good, this is online forever, right? You just... Forever. Oh, no. And we'll, we'll rewind and fast forward. <laughs> Say, this is where he lost it. Yeah. This is where That's Gerard it. asked him that question that pissed him off and he lost it. And it just went all over the place. Hopefully not. Guys, keep the questions coming in. Again, I'm trying to work as consistently as possible. I'm going to pick up the pace just a bit now because I think we get the idea. Okay. Yeah, lots of our friends. Michael Snyder says, what's up? Hey, Jesse Gaines. Yeah. Great Jesse. to see hey, you work Jesse. today. Yeah. Thank you. Ali Vines has yeah. been a supporter. Yeah, Ali, you can get Pivot Point mannequins anywhere in the world. I believe almost most it's an international company. You want to go to pivotpointshop.com and you can get them from there. Do you know what? I have to say, um, in all my classes that I do, I am, I'm a really big fan of using Pivot Point mannequins, actually, because you never have to worry. No matter, I mean, for example... Well, they're never dodgy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've never used this specific one before, but I'm not worried about anything coming into it because they have a certain standardization. You know you always have a quality mannequin with really good hair. So. Um, well, yeah, I'll talk about that. They're a little more expensive. You can get, like, maybe you've done this before. Someone books you for class. You come in, say, oh, we'll get the mannequins. Don't worry. Yeah. And somebody's got a good one. They've got a Pivot Point Viola. And then somebody's got some, you know ratchet mannequin that they bought on eBay for $12, yeah. and the hair is synthetic, yeah. it sticks straight out from the head, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they've got a day with Jay Mahmood and they can't even learn anything. <laughs> you know, they're better to just sit and watch. So sometimes it might cost, they're, they're by no means the cheapest mannequins out there, mm -hmm. although there are great monthly sales, and you should keep your eyes peeled because they do on pivotpointshop.com, very often offer 40% off, 30% oh, off wow. certain mannequins. Yeah. Uh, but if you're going to invest in great education, you need a great head. And if the difference is $30 in the long run, I think it's really worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, like you're saying, they, they do cost a little bit more than what's out there. But it's a, you know, if you're investing in yourself for a course, you want the best. Now, personally, when I do courses, you won't have to worry about getting your own mannequin. I always supply the mannequins and I always use pivot points. So. And again, I think that's a good way of just standardizing everything in the room, isn't it? Again, lots of love coming in. A lot of people talking about their history with this haircut. Yeah. Dennis Dettori, who's uh, someone who watches very often, said he learned this in 1972 at Sassoon's with John Santilli, oh, wow. uh, Marco Cudmore, Franco. Unfortunately, it cuts off after that. Yeah. Uh, but he had some great teachers. That's amazing. Um, love coming in from Marie Crowder. Yeah, hey, from Nicola them. Smith UK team, always uh, an amazing job, Jay. Yeah, they're good friends of mine, actually. I hope you guys are well. Our buddy Josh LaMonica wants to know when you guys are going to team up and we're going to do a uh, London to New York seminar with Josh and Jay. When are we going to, is we'll that what you guys want to see? If We've got some big see. ideas for 2019, uh, Josh. That's why I asked when you were coming to the States, because we want to get you on our Hairbrain Live set. You know, we do these beautiful ones here for Facebook. But then we do big blown out ones with five camera angle and all that. And definitely next year we want to get Josh and Jay in the studio. Amazing. So keep your eyes out for 2019 hblive.me education. Amazing. Okay, guys. So last couple of sections here on this side. And again, at this stage, don't switch off. Because I think sometimes when you see a finish line, you start to think, okay, I can just rush through this. Keep the consistency in your sectioning. Higher, lower, and lower, remember, with your elevation. And just remain focused on the last few sections. You'll notice I keep combing the hair into place. This is so important to the way that I'm working. When you were doing your training, Jay, were you exposed to the philosophy that 80% of the value comes from the last 20% of the work? Yeah, Do you remember exactly. that? Yeah, you know, exactly. So in the training that Jay and I went through many years, different years, different decades even, at Sassoon, it was still that same concept as a precision haircut or really any artist. Yeah. We can always start out with a lot of energy and a lot of focus and get the nape to sit down right, but sometimes by that last section, we don't have much energy or focus left, where sometimes it works way better to go the opposite way. Start off kind of in a relaxed, calm, general feeling and get more and more focused 
as you go along because that last 20% really determines 80% exactly. of the value. Exactly. So I've got two more sections now, waiting to shake down. Then we're going to check it off and start to dry. Um, I really look forward to sharing lots of tips with you when I'm drying because with this haircut, I see it so often where somebody will cut it well, but then if you dry it not so good, it can make your haircut look bad. So let's... Um, I'll give you lots of tips on that as well, hopefully. Well, I have a good story about that. I'm ch chiming in here because there's just so much fun stuff coming up. When I was an assistant uh, yeah. on, first on the floor, yeah. and I got to assist my art director, who was a man called Vernon Keach, who was a legendary Sassoon art director. Yeah. Um, and he had me blow dry, and afterwards he was very angry with me. And at the time, his haircut's like $130. This is 1991, that's a lot of money. Yeah. So you made a $130 haircut look like a $10 haircut with that, you know, terrible wow. blow dry. But I learned, you know? I learned, and I practiced, and... Uh, you still don't like blow dries. I still don't like blow drying, but I practice, I, and I practice a lot on the mannequins, because it's something when I know if I have to go into a big event or a show or something, I need to brush up on my blow drying. Yeah. I definitely practice on, I have a long Vanessa, which is beautiful long hair. Do you know, funnily enough, I was, um, I was talking to my barber earlier on today. I had a haircut just before the video. And um, we were talking about that, you know, practicing our crafts. Because I think barbers are so skilled as well. They're amazing. I have so much respect for them. And we were talking about sort of our training and when we were coming up and how much time you spend or, or dedicate on, on the practice of your craft. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've always believed that it takes that at least 10,000 hours, mm -hmm. you know, to get took to mastery with haircutting and hairdressing. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, think of how many of those hours you could spend. If you're really driven in your free time, mm -hmm. you could probably get half those hours on a mannequin at home practicing. That's you know, another so way right. to speak. We're always looking for hacks, yeah, you know. Exactly. And, you know, if, you, if I said to you it's going to take you seven years to mastery, you said, I don't have seven years. Yeah. That's a great way to do what you're doing in the salon on real people yeah. and then double down on your practice and get yourself some great mannequins. That's one thing nobody can take away from you is the amount of dedication you put into your practice. You know, if I'm honest, at times of my career, you know, I was told that I'm never going to make it, but, you know, but um, because maybe I wasn't very good in the beginning days. Um, but that's one thing I never stopped practicing. And, um, you know, I'd always stay behind and cut hair or cut hair at home or cut friends, etc. And it's only through practice. And only you are in control of how much you practice. Yeah? The more practice you put in, the more hours you put in, like Gerard said, you'll get to kind of where you want to with the right education. So... I'm just going to start the check-in phase now before we blow dry. My balance seems okay. It seems good. Um, first time for everything. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. No pressure. I've got Kelly walking around with the camera, so this better be good. Um, I'm just going to um, check this shape now uh, one final time, and then we'll dry it off. Okay. So again, if you cut it well and you've cross-checked it throughout, you shouldn't need to spend a long, long time on this, but be very thorough. Okay. So here we go. I'm pulling the hair back here, like so. And I'm combing the hair in the direction that I'm going to take sections in as I check. All right? So again, just get the hair nice and evenly damp. Comb this hair back. All right? And I'm going to comb the hair like so. Around the head, and I'm going to pull back behind the ear. And just make sure that where the graduation meets the line, that I haven't built too much weight. Okay? I'm going to carry on, like so. All right, and again, I'm coming from the top because I'm building weight. I don't want to mess with my elevation now. I'm just making sure that this is all fluid, yeah? Is there like a uh, percentage in your mind that you think this is how much of the shape happens wet? This is how much happens when I'm checking? Yeah. This is how much happens after I dry it? Do you think that way? If there was a percentage, I'm quite extreme. I'd say as much as possible, whatever percentage that is. You really, I can't emphasize it enough, only for the way that I work, I'm not speaking for everybody. I like to get my shape as clean as physically possible and then blow dry because I think if you do that, when you get to the end, you'll see hopefully I won't have too much to do, but your shape, your blow dry will be easier as well because you're not fighting a bad haircut. You know, the, the hair is actually sitting, you can see the hair should sit kind of how you want it to. 
Yeah, you'll notice all that patience has kind of paid off now, hasn't it? As I'm checking, we're thankfully we're not um, we're not really having too much coming off. Yeah. What What do you find is the acceptable amount? Like, if you're checking right now, you know, do you follow like that eighth of an inch dusting rule, or is there? A, what, what, when should someone know that they should go back and recut it rather than just check it off? Um, I think I'd rather answer that after I've checked, just in case. <laughs> and cover I'm your bases. Myself, exactly. Yeah. To be honest, guys, let's be really, really honest, okay? Haircutting is very logical. This is the thing, right? Haircutting is really, really logical. If you think about it, if your sections are fine, you're following your guide, and you're being very, very patient and consistent, you shouldn't really need to cut anything off, you know? And again, I know it sounds easy, but everything I've said to you, I'm doing. I've not done anything different to what I'm explaining, and you can see now that it's come to the checking stage, you know, there's not a huge amount to cut off. Um, so, like Gerard said, you can dust. If you need to trim little bits off, it's fine. But don't fix your haircut through cross checking. Please don't do that. Okay, so here we go. Same thing on this side. Curved sections around the head. I'm bringing the hair back behind the ear. The reason I'm bringing it back here is because this is the point that your graduation and line meet. So that's where you want to make sure that there's a smooth transition. All right. So keep the questions coming, guys. We're just going to get into blow drying very shortly. We've got uh, Anna Luck says hi from Tuscany, Italy. It would be very nice. I wish we were there. I know. Donna Wood says hi from Toronto. There was plenty of questions about when you might be coming to um, Canada. Yeah. A few people were said, when would JB in Canada? Yeah, I'd love to come. To, you know what? I'll arrange a class. Where are we talking? Toronto? I love going to Toronto. So if somebody wanted to uh, to find you and book you, bring you to their salon or academy, what should they do? Just um, just drop me an email. It's um, info at jmahmood.com. And in fact, before I forget, I um, just this morning, my um, one of my classes in February in New York went on sale. So if you go onto my Instagram, you click the link in the bio, you can you can buy your spot right away. It would be three days of precision cutting, just like this. And um, yeah, it would be it'd be great to spend some time with you guys. I'm very quickly going to get the outline in. I want to give you a quick tip here. Now, what I'm thinking of doing is you see this kind of um, effect that we have here where the hair is squared off. I just want to connect the outline into the line in the side. Now, when I was younger, I used to cut this in. I'd work into the side and I'd start to cut this and change my line. Okay, let's start to become really efficient. If you think about it, this line through here is already cut. Okay, you don't need to recut this line. So what I like to do to save me a lot of time is take a section in line with the back of the ear, like so, okay? Comb this hair out of the way, nice and clean. Keep it nice and tidy, okay? And then just comb this hair down in its natural form, like so. Now all you need to do is you pick your starting point and your finishing point will be the shortest length you have here. Okay, if you meet that point, when you comb the hair down, your line will flow because it's already cut, so that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. If everything's been cut perfectly, if, it's like see. all the dots should connect just right. Yeah, exactly. Should right. I get the drum out and we'll do it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So not only is it hot under these lights, I've got the whole world watching, so I'm going to do my very best. Okay, and remember, at this stage, just get your rough shape in, all right, because you can see the hair's quite flicky at this stage, and you just want to start to visualize your shape. Now, don't let this flick deceive you. Um, what I like to do at this stage is if the hair is very flicky, um, I just comb it down and just with the tips of my blade, just roughly get my shape in. We've had quite a few questions about length of scissor and preferences and any advice you have for the scissor yeah. or as many Americans call it, the shear. The shear. Um, that's a debate itself, isn't it? Yes, but let's we'll not even get one into off. that one. Let's we'll start that one off afterwards. Um, yeah. I think, to be honest... I personally work with like a, a five or five and a half, I think is good. Um, purely because of the kind of work that we do, you're quite close to, you know, especially when you're refining outlines, you're quite close to um, the skin at times and the face and the neck. So you don't really want to cut someone, you want to have maximum control. Our good friend Marina Lantos has been watching and hey, she Marina. is wondering, uh, do you ever do this part after the blow dry? Um, you, can you do it? Yes. Do I ever do it? I try not to because, and it's not wrong, um, I like to kind of do it wet because like I said, it just helps me to visualize my shape. Is this the finished look? No way. 
will I need to work on it dry 100%? So but you're kind of eliminating the superfluous stuff that you know, exactly. and then you can dial it in after the dry. Exactly. This is the, the beauty of our craft. There's so many different methodologies and philosophies, and I wish you all the same experience that I've had over my nearly 30 years as a hairdresser, yeah. is that I've gone through so many of them, and at a certain point you start to kind of make your own, yeah, you know? Exactly. Um, so try everything. Try everything, practice, get as many mannequins as you can. If you see something that someone told you was wrong, but you see the end result and you go, hey, that looks good, try it. Judge by the end result, try everything, make your own techniques. Exactly, so you can see this hairline's um, flicking a lot because I've had it to, obviously we've had it to a shorter length. Um, once I dry it, I'm not worried, we're gonna really refine that line when it sits well. I just wanna show you what happens here. When you comb it down, can you see you haven't needed to waste your time and cut this line because it's already cut. Um, I'm gonna start to dry my shape off now. I'll give you lots of tips. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna apply a small amount of product. Um, I think, like I said, the mannequins, they're so realistic. Like low dry low shape. Sounds good, let's try that down here. Thank you very much, I'll take this one, thank you. Right guys, so we're going to use um, a light bro uh, blow dry lotion. This one is by Daviness. Um, fantastic range of products, good friends as well. And it's a product range that I'm actually familiar with. I used to use their products earlier in my career. Okay guys, so combing the hair around to get a real even distribution of product. So what I'm thinking, guys, I might um, I might start to use the mirror a bit more at this stage, um, just so we can. Do you want to move right in front of the mirror? Sure, we can yeah, do let's that. Come over here. Nice. Hello, Alice. So now, um, so get some product in. I'm going to jump straight in with my my blow dry. Thank you very much. I'm using a Denman brush, a nine row Denman brush. They come in different sizes. I'm using this because it's got. Um, a good amount of tension on it. I'm a big fan of the Denman brush. And I'm going to start off by wrap drying, actually, without a nozzle to begin with. Okay, I'm going to give you lots of tips on wrap drying this shape in particular. Now, the first thing I would say is break it down in quarters in your mind, okay? And I try to talk, talk up. Luckily, these aren't too noisy, okay? All I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the nape. I'm going to adjust the head position, and this will allow me to access this area. I'm pointing the heat downwards, and I'm brushing the hair around the head, and down, okay? So you want to go forward and down, all right? You don't want to dry the hair 100% at this stage. You want to get it to about 70, 70 or 80% dry. So we're going forward and down. All right, be really, really thorough. Get the hair moving, get the air in the roots. So even, you know, what you're doing, I think so many people think it's so simple, lap drying, but there's like theory and technique here, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So if you, uh, maybe if you come around, you might be able to see, I'm really getting, as I'm separating the hair, I'm getting the air in, and I'm being really firm um, in this case as well. Now I'm going to go the opposite way, okay? I'm going to brush backwards. Okay, like so. Really get the air in at the root. And you go generally with a powerful airflow and lots of heat, Any yeah. anything there that you change? Yeah, not really. I mean, if you find that the hair's a little bit more challenging, turn down the speed. So keep the heat high, but turn down the speed. And what that will do is it will give you more time on the hair. So um, you can gradually get the hair into shape a lot more. Around the crown area, I'm actually blow drying against the roundness of the head. And this is going to give me a, a natural fullness. Is there a difference for you between wrapping forward and wrapping backward? Um, it depends what you want to achieve, to be honest. In this case, um, I don't want to brush the hair forwards into the face too much. I kind of want it off the face. Um, it's how you're going to set the hair, really. So again, this tricky area behind the ear, really get that around the head. I'm making use of the head shape, the mastoid process here. Really, oops, and we've lost power for a second. 
stay with us. In fact, I can explain as I'm going along, okay? And what that does, by brushing the hair backwards, it just starts to cool down. And you can see, if I brush the hair down, it's taken shape, hasn't it? Yeah, if we look at this shape, you can start to see how that's developing. Simply through wrap drying. I'm going to swap sides now and do exactly the same on this side. And uh, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to start to blow dry nice and quick as though I was doing it on a client. But you guys keep the questions coming in, okay? Sasha loves the statement, break the roots. Break the roots, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Our yeah. buddy uh, Kyle Rose is watching. Michael Snyder, always uh, sharing love. Thank you for being here. Yeah. We've got Amani watching from Egypt. Hello, if you guys are out there uh, watching, you, we're here in New York City, so we always like to see where everybody's watching from, because uh, they're all over the world. Amazing. We're always wondering where the furthest viewer possibly is. We had uh, Myanmar the other day, which was the first time I saw that, and actually someone in North Korea, oh, which I, I wasn't even sure if they would have access to this in North Korea. Um, so I was surprised to see that. So that's pretty amazing. So guys, shout out to Hairbrain for making this possible, for connecting our door. Yeah, yeah. And thank you, Pivot Point, for sponsoring this wonderful series and uh, creating these incredible mannequins for, for classes. So this week, when you had your three-day class, Jay, what did people learn? What did they learn? Um, basically, one of the things we spoke about is not only different sort of techniques, but um, one thing that I'm really passionate about is sort of understanding different starting points as well. Sorry, I'm blowing the hair all around. Um, for example, if you ask hairdressers where they're going to start a haircut from, I think 98% of them will say from the back. And then if you ask them why you're starting from the back, they'll say because they always do. They wouldn't really be able to, with the greatest respect, be able to tell you why. So I think to break away from the routine that we get set in, we have to start to approach um, our haircuts from different areas and understand why we're doing that. So we went on a journey, we cut some beautiful bobs, we cut some layered bobs, we cut a graduated bob, we've done some long layers. Basically, all the looks that we've done, it was a three-day course, and we've done um, six looks. And all of the looks that we've done, you can, you can actually go and use in the salon uh, the next day. And in fact, my students were messaging me the next day, saying how they've gone straight into work and they're using the haircut, and the clients are loving them. So that was brilliant. Um, my next class, as I said, is in February. If you guys want to come along and learn and spend some time with me and see how I do this, I would love for you to come along. It's the very beginning of February in New York City. Um, and again, you can reach out on my Instagram or get in touch with me afterwards and um, we'll connect. So, what I'm doing now, I'm using the second blow dry technique. That was wrap dry. It was designed to create fluidity in the roots. Now I'm using tension dry. And what this is doing, it's designed to kind of control the direction of the ends and to smooth the hair down. All right, so I'm just really concentrating on the ends here, really getting the ends nice and hot and slowly laying the hair down. And you can see the ends are starting to sit really nicely. By now, the roots are pretty dry, so I'm focusing more on the mid length than ends. Also, notice how um, when I apply the heat, the brush is on its way out when I apply the heat. You don't want to add heat now because you'll get rootless. So kind of pass the brush through, then add heat. Okay guys, even um, as I'm blow drying, you'll see I'm continually brushing the hair into place to assess it. Well, and it's starting I, to see I just well. have to say, you can see the proof is in the technique here because lots of times at this stage, you know, when you bring that top section on a graduated bob technique, it can look really kind of steppy and wonky. And you know there's a lot of work that needs to be done where you can really see that that's paid off beautifully. Thank you very much. So why not choose a round brush for this technique? Do you have any thoughts on that? Do you know what? First of all, um, shout out to all the um, round brush users. I, I actually love a round brush. I, love, I'm not, I can't use it. I'm not very good with it. Um, just because of the training I had and the way that I approach hair. I love the effect that you get, but I think if you're doing a haircut like this, it will probably um, become a little bit more challenging to get this kind of finish. Because obviously you could unintentionally, you could create root lift. And I think that with a Denman brush and the way that I was brushing, you can't really wrap dry with a, with a round brush. It would be really painful. 
but also to kind of smooth the hair over like this, it's much easier with what we refer to as flat brushes. So guys, keep the questions coming in. If you are at home and you find blow drying difficult, if I'm honest with you, most of my career I struggled with blow drying, and that's purely because I wasn't very passionate about it. I love cutting hair, I wanted to get back to cutting hair, so I brushed my blow dryer just so I can keep cutting. And then I realized how important the blow dry is to the way my hair cut looks. So if you're one of those people who you don't feel very confident with blow drying or you don't enjoy it, throw some questions at me, I'll give you loads of tips. Well, you can see this is perfectly complimentary way to bring out this shape, and again, uh, you're, it's looking pretty flawless, that graduated bob there, so kudos to you and your technique here. Yeah. How, how do you feel uh, working with this particular mannequin? I know this is your first time using the yeah. Elise. You know what, going back to that, this is the first time I've cut this one. Um, you're always thinking when you're walking in, especially if you're doing a live video, you know, over the years you trust your technique, you know what you can and can't do. Um, but I was thinking in my mind, wow, I hope the hair is good on this one. I swear to God, I'm being very honest with you. I still get scared, in case you're wondering, I still get nervous, and I still find it difficult. But um, that's the thing about pivot points. When you told me it's a pivot point one, I relaxed a bit, because, you know, no matter which one of them you pick up, even the men's one for barbering, the standard is so good, honestly, really, yeah. really good. You know, when you wrap back here, wrap that yeah. back away from the ear a little bit, like you can see the little details of how it's implanted in the hairline and how there's actually a curve to the hairline. It, it's, that's what makes it different. And, it, you know, that's one of the things, of course, the quality of the hair, but the way the hair is implanted into the head makes it a great learning experience. So I'm glad you're enjoying working with Elise. Yeah. Okay, guys, so again, you'll notice not only with the way I was cutting, but I'm also being patient with the way that I'm blow drying this hair. Yeah? You have to blow dry it with real patience and care because it can make a really good haircut look bad if you don't put um, that level of technique so, in. With the tension drying that you're doing now, or what some of us used to call leaf drying, yeah. or maybe have you heard that term before? I have, yeah. yeah. I have it. It, can you create a lot of volume? Um, I guess you could if you wanted to, yep. but you'd apply the heat at this stage, right. in the lifting stage. I'm actually getting the brush in, turning over, then applying the So heat. you're pulling the root and so, so it, yeah. it can be, you know, for myself, and I do know how to use the round brush fairly well, yeah. but sometimes I can, even on a long layer, with this type of brush, if you told me you got 15 minutes and I want it to look yeah. model fabulous and you don't have 30 minutes to do all the tur twirling and curling, yeah. you'd be amazed what you can do with a Denman brush yeah. or a Vest brush. I love a Denman yeah. brush. Yeah. I'm not endorsed by these guys in any way. I absolutely love Denman brushes. Absolutely love them. If I'm honest, in my early career, I never liked them. I was a big fan of the Vest brush, yeah? Which is similar to this, it's just a lot more art. But um, you have to go old school with the Denman. Denman is honestly the best brush you can use depending on what you're doing. I think for looks like this, for a bob or a graduated bob, I love a Denman. Let me know what you guys think at home. You a lot know, of love. Mary Wee says this is the best blow dry. Your buddy Ali Vine says looking fire. Oh, thank you guys. Jahari Koop says the cut looks awesome. That is very precise and very impressive. Do you know what? Wait till it's finished. I'm going to do my best yeah. to elevate it even more. I promise you. Our good friend Nanette Negrat is watching. She says hi. Always a pleasure to have Hello, you with us. Hello guys. Thank hi, you Nanette. for tuning in. Okay, keep the questions coming guys, we're here for you, you know, we really are here for you and like I said before, I love what Hairbrains are doing to bring us all together. I'm actually heading to London after this. Um... Yeah, you're literally, we, we got Jay <laughs> yeah. on his way to the airport. I'm going to the airport, my suitcase yeah. is behind me. Yeah. He's got a 10pm flight tonight back to London. Uh, but he's been here in New York all week, so we've been hanging out and doing what we love to do, talking about the craft, sharing our excitement for the future of our incredible industry. And uh, we said we, we can't let this week go by without getting Jay in the studio. So this great opportunity in this series of professionals who practice that's sponsored by our good friends at Pivot Point. I said, Jay, I noticed in class this week you guys were working with the Erica Mannequin, and uh, obviously you're a fan of Pivot Point. Would you come in and do one of your incredible haircuts for us? So that's what you've been watching. If you're joining us now, Jay put in the whole beautiful shape in the beginning. He's blow drying. Don't go anywhere because with a haircut like this, 
after the blow dry, the finish work is almost everything. Yeah. It really is that last 2% that makes it incredible. So stay tuned. And if you did miss the beginning, at any time after we're done here, you can go to the video section and you can fast forward, you can watch this video or any one of our videos on Facebook, click the video tab and you can watch any one of our videos, you can fast forward, you can rewind and you can practice right along. Get yourself this Elise mannequin, go to pivotportshop.com and you can practice the same exact technique. Looking pretty good, man. Okay, pretty fine. good. Here we go, uh, stay on the other side. Now here's the thing. Um, not only thank you, Harvey, sorry. Not only with um, blow drying is it cutting is it hard on one side, it's also blow drying. So I'm gonna move in a bit here. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna swap hands and I'm actually gonna blow dry this way now with my left hand. Okay, it is a little bit tricky, but you know what? Don't a lot of it is a battle that we face in our mind. You know, don't don't think about doing the other side. Just focus on the technique. Okay, you're coming in, twist down and under, no root lift, and just apply the heat, all right, and you yeah. can see. Why do you find it's important to switch hands? I think you get, personally, I feel that I get an even blow dry if I switch hands, because that way I'm getting, um, if I blow dry with one hand, the ends are all going to face one way, whereas if I'm coming this way, the ends follow the direction that they leave the brush, so they're going to come under and forwards, if that makes sense to you guys. It sure right? does. Yeah? I've been trying to share that with people for years, even with the round brush. Yeah. I try to work, and you know, just from the point of your body, yeah. you know, if you always have the dryer in one hand and the brush in the other, you really start to wear your, your, your back out. Yeah. So I find there's a benefit to that, yeah. and then it just makes you more dexterous, you know? Being you know why I love doing videos with you, Gerard? I swear to God, guys, yeah? Shout out to Gerard, um, because because obviously your background, you're a cutter. You're a cutter, fantastic hairdresser. And um, I think that it takes so much pressure off me every time I do a video with you guys. It's hard to, men aren't very good at multitasking. We all know this, all right? I'll be the first one to admit it. And um, it's just, I can concentrate on my haircut and it's such a help when the person who's kind of doing the narrating, if you like, when the interviewing, actually knows what they're talking about. It makes life so much easier because I'm not worried about what you're saying about my haircut. I know you know what you're talking about. Well, so. thank you. I appreciate that. And that's, you know, I, I would say I'm the luckiest hairdresser there is because I've had been in love with this craft for so long. Because you're with Kelly. Oh, uh, because my beautiful <laughs> wife. But yeah, Senator. also because I've been in this craft for so long and I, I know how easy it is to lose your passion when you're not around other people that are passionate. So almost every day I get to hang out with incredible hairdressers mm -hmm. and, and soak up their technique. And guess what? I learn something every day. So I think you guys can have that same exact experience by constantly tuning in and, and sharing and learning. Yeah. So it looks like we're getting close to the last few sections of blow drying. Mm -hmm. Just for anyone who's just joined, go over all the basics of what you're doing as you finish up. Okay guys, so from here, you'll notice if you're watching the other side as well, I was blow drying backwards off the face. Now the reason for this is because on a haircut like this, you don't want the hair swinging forward in the face. I think you kind of want it to sit under and swing forward. And a lot of that has to do with the way I'm drying it. Um, so you'll notice I'm encouraging the roots to move back. And what you'll notice, what happens with that is they actually sit down really well. Okay, so constantly using a combination of wrap dry and tension dry. Okay, so very quickly again, wrap drying is creating fluidity in the roots by brushing the hair repeatedly in various different directions around the head, using the natural roundness of the head to get a bevel on the hair. And then tension dry, like this, you'll notice I'm coming through diagonally and pulling the hair back so it sits forward, okay? And what this is doing, is not only is it allowing me to stretch the hair and get it sleek and shiny, but it's also allowing me to control the direction of the ends. Okay, I'm following all the way through. One thing that I really want to emphasize to you all at home, guys, with the greatest respect, I know we're all hairdressers, I don't mean to sound patronizing, um, but it's not just a drying process. We're not just drying the hair. We're actually preparing the hair to refine it, yeah? So I think when I started to think like that, it changed my attitude towards drying because all of a sudden I realized the importance of it, okay? So we're not just drying the hair because she could walk out and it would dry. You know, we, we're really preparing the hair 
for the next step, the next phase of, um, of the look. Cal, can you come in nice and close? Because this is the real money right here. You can see that there's no step here whatsoever. Oh, and this is a, I can't see that. No, yet, no, but. this is a, a beautifully dense head of hair. Uh, but Jay's technique was so strong that, you know, it's money. I, I, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been, you know, able to get that to happen. So you kudos know what? to you. you. Got, if this carries on, yeah. you're always so complimentary. Yeah. I'm going to get a big head, man. Yeah. You're going to need a bigger studio. Yeah. We'll, we'll find one, don't worry. Find one with an echo, so my ego can fit in. Exactly. Okay, so guys. getting close to the finish of the blow dry yeah. here, and then we're going to get to see Jay put the icing on the cake here, which I think is, uh, you know, really those finishing touches of how to get this to sit just perfectly. Also, guys, you'll notice even on the previous side, I'm very firm on the hairline. Really brush it back repeatedly, okay? And also, when you put the tension dry on it in the end, I'm pulling it off the face. Watch, from here off the face, really, really back and under, and then it will pull down sitting um, beveled on the end, yeah, that's kind so, of what you want from it. This is a, a pretty standard question, Jay, if this was your client in the salon, yeah. how long do you think before she needs to come in to get it uh, recut? Good question, actually, I've got, a, I've got a beautiful client, beautiful lady, who might be watching, actually, she's not a hairdresser. But she supports everything I do. Yvonne, if you're watching, this is what I always do to you. Um, she, oh, she's got the perfect hair for a graduated bob. Um, and she comes in kind of every eight weeks or so, two months. It'll last really well. And to be honest, when she comes in sometimes, it looks so good as it is. Um, but she just likes it looking pristine. So guys, it's so, so important how you iron this. I'm going to show you how to iron this. And you'll actually be surprised, okay? Um, I'm not a very big fan of ironing short hair or ironing graduation. I just want to put that out there. But on this haircut, if you iron it correctly in the right places, it looks incredible. Okay, so here we go. It's uh, it's game time. Right, so. Flat iron's talking to you. That's it. Like, I'm oh. ready. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna change the head position, put the hair down. And you can see, it's not, I'm not going to straighten the hair. I don't need to. The hair is very straight as it is. Again, be really patient with your, your blow dry. Now, at the top, I only, I only iron the last two or three sections. Yeah? It's very about compressing the surface. Do not ever, ever iron any of this. Please don't. Okay? I never say never um, when I teach, except for when I'm talking about this. Don't why? Do you feel it makes it too pokey or it kind of it just, just... It just looks so unnatural. It looks mm -hmm. too straight and you'll emphasize a weight line. Okay? So here we go. I'll be as quick as I can for you guys. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, please don't switch off now. This is the important bit, okay? Right, so um, just the ends, all right, from here. Just the ends, nowhere near the roots. And I'll give you some more advice for any teachers out there who teach on mannequins. This is a great bit of advice for you because if you think that mannequins, they have a little bit of a, a jump at the roots, don't they? So why don't you use that jump to your advantage? If you iron from the roots, you're gonna flatten it, you'll get a weight line. Leave the roots alone, literally iron the ends, the mid lengths and the ends, slow down on the ends, bevel them, and that jump at the roots will actually spread out your weight line. All right, so there you go. And you'll see, you haven't had to do any much work to it at all. I'm really just using this as a shine tool rather than a straightening tool. Okay, so. And what's nice here is this literally is highlighted hair, so there's different it's tones amazing. there. Yeah. And if you have any type of a weight line, um, it, it would show. So there you go. Okay, so from here now, guys, again, I don't like to iron every single section because I believe that if you put effort into your blow dry, you shouldn't really need to, okay? So would you say it's kind of above the round of the head? Or yeah, the hair on the top? Just polishing it off? Yeah, and then look, just really adding shine, slowing down just on the ends. Nowhere near the roots in any section at all. Okay, I'm gonna try to be as quick as I can. Guys, in the meantime, Please, please keep asking questions. It makes it more enjoyable for us. It starts the dialogue, and of course, um, this is what we're here for. We're here to answer all your questions. There's lots of love coming in. Uh, Mary Wee says, great advice. Our buddy Sasho, he's been loving it. He says, lovely mate. Uh, Mark Guider says, looks amazing. Uh, Mark from Dublin, lots of, lots of love for you. You, you. you answered all the questions that there were. Thank you. So guys, Todd um, Phillip is here. Hanging out, it says nice nape line. Thank you. 
And you know what, guys? That was the rough shape. Now let's go back to what I did. When, it when the shape was wet, you'll notice I got that in really roughly. I quickly got the um, shape in and I told you it just helps me visualize. Can you now see why I did that? Because it just, you can see the shape sitting together now. And if we're in the salon now, even if my next lady comes in, you know, you get that dreaded tap on the shoulder, your next client's in, I would be in such a relaxed place because I know my shape's looking good, you know? And what I used to do, I'm going to be very honest with you, when I teach, I always think back to my own experience and that's what I believe helps make me um, a better teacher when I think of the problems I faced. I used to always allow an extra 10 or 15 minutes at the end as a safety in case my haircut wasn't good and I could fix it. So I used to rush through my shapes um, and I used to think, right, I had enough time to fix it. But now you'll notice my approach to cutting is so patient. Um, it almost looks slow, but I get it done in an appointment time. The reason being is because I place the emphasis on my technique. So now that I'm at the end, you can see I have a lot less work to do. I'm not panicking at all. So when you do work in the salon, or if someone wants to use this type of technique in the salon, how much time do you think they should book? An hour, max. You don't need any more time than a normal appointment time. You just need to be very clinical in your technique. It comes from a good education, a good understanding. Again, if you guys want to do this, get in touch. We can go through it together. But really, once you develop your technique, then you need to learn to trust yourself. You know, Just trust your technique. If people want to train with you in 2019, yeah. um, how, how can they reach out? I'm actually in New York a lot. Every other month I'm going to be in New York, so every few weeks. Um, I've got two courses in February. I've got a classic cutting course, which will include this haircut. Um, I've also got a barbering course. Now, that's really interesting because um, I, I really want to... I get a lot of love from barbers around the world who reach out and say, we cut men's hair, but we love your work. Well, Which then you also nice. always wear the tight fade. Let's see, That's Mr. Man, Mahmoud. He just got his fade. He's like, <laughs> I got to be on camera tonight. I got to get my fresh fade. fade for you guys. Fresh fade. So really, um, what I'm, the point of me saying is they say, I, I want to learn to cut hair like you, but I don't do ladies' hair. But I offer courses where barbers who can sometimes, with the greatest respect, start to feel a little bit uncomfortable with slightly longer lengths when guys are coming in, especially with the way hair is being worn now with longer lengths on top. You can come and do a course. We'll do scissor over comb. We'll do longer layered haircuts. We'll work it down to sort of um, more fitted, tailored shapes. We we'll talk about corner placements. So both of them courses will be in New York City, okay, in February, very beginning of February. And, um, yeah, just get in touch, info at jmahmood.com. Can they reach out to you through social media? They can reach out on Instagram. It's just my name, jmahmood, on Instagram. Drop me a message, guys. We're all friends. If ever there's anything I can ever do for anyone, I promise, just reach out. If it's within my ability, I will try to help you. And absolutely, on an education standpoint, if you want to do anything, get in touch. And them. then all the classes, the hands-on work is done on Pivot Point Mannequins? All on Pivot Point Mannequins. And um, I was talking to my barber, actually, about my classes, because he's one of the barbers who was saying, I'd love to, um, I'd love to learn how to cut hair um, and start to do ladies' work. And um, <clears throat> what I said to him is, on my courses, sometimes you'll go on a three-day classic course, for example, and um, you'll actually do one haircut every day, for example. So the educator will demonstrate in the morning, and you'll do a haircut in the afternoon. On mine, I believe that you should cut hair as much as possible. So if you're doing three days with me, you'll cut hair in the morning and in the afternoon. So a lot of that is because you have the mannequin. So Absolutely. it's always there, always on time. And it's if so you take a break, they don't go anywhere. Yeah. And do you kind of do like a Simon Says where you cut a little bit, they cut a little yeah, bit? Exactly. So you don't necessarily spend like two hours demoing or three hours. Exactly. and then. Yeah. So you're, you would do panel by panel. Again, exactly. the beauty, it's many of us who have, you know, kind of transitioned... Yeah. into becoming full-time educators have found that an incredible mannequin makes a big difference. I love, you know, if I've got a group of really experienced people that are there to learn about their own individual approach, live models can be great because yeah. there's room for error, there's room for challenge. Yeah. But when you're trying to teach something so fundamental like how to do a perfect graduated bob, you don't really want those challenges, to be honest with you. I don't think you do. You want everyone working at the same pace, doing the same thing, having the same conversation. Exactly. And then once that's been mastered, that next level maybe is great to work on live models and let's see what challenges come up. But 
pivot point mannequins. If you're interested in taking hands-on training with J Mahmood, follow him on Instagram at J Mahmood and uh, are you on Facebook as well? I am J Mahmood Education. J Mahmood at, at Facebook as well. So looks like you're kind of coming to the finish of the ironing here. We're going to yeah. get to see those final few snippety snips. I think from here, guys, if you're a little bit pushed for time, I think from here we're going to be about another 10 minutes. We're going to refine it, clean it up, and that's it. We're done. So. Please stay with me. Like Gerard said before, what was it you put so nicely? The final 20% makes 80% or something? 80% of the value. Yeah, it's yeah. so true. It's a, it's, I think it's called uh, Parathos Law. Yeah. It's a, a mathematical equation thing. But when I was training, you know, it was, it was actually in our book. There was a whole thing you had to read about Parathos Law that, you know, the final, final. And especially, you know, the more defined the haircut. Yeah. When you're getting something like a graduated bob, you know, if you stop now, yeah. it, it's really not as good as it can be. Those little final finals are really what make it incredible. Right, all right. guys, I'm going to jump straight into refinement, okay? I'm not worried at all about the balance of the outline. Forget about it. I'm going to come back to that. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start to refine my internal shape. Here's how I like to do it, okay? I'm going to come through with vertical sections, okay? Working with the tight side of the comb as clean as I can. And I'm going to point into the hair very slightly. You'll notice that the hair is a lot darker here. It's just the way mannequins are made, okay? And it happens on all of them, where it's a little bit denser at the crown. Um, I'm just very lightly going to point into the hair, okay? You'll see, by keeping the blade completely parallel to the cutting line, you don't actually change the cutting line, all right? I'm going to go through as quick as I can, all right? And remember, because my horizontal shape in the back was square, as I'm doing this with vertical sections, I have to over-direct to the previous each time, otherwise I'll start to change my shape. All right, so let's talk about this. You work so hard on this perfectly clean, clean line. Yeah. Some people might be thinking, well, why would you go back and point into it? Yeah. And how do you, I know the answer, but yeah. how do you avoid like now changing it into a texturized, choppy haircut? Right. See, I wouldn't say it's going to become a texturized, choppy haircut. If I had become very heavy-handed with it, then it'd be a complete waste of time. But um, really, what this is doing is it's just making the haircut work. So really understand that. You're putting the structure and method in, now you're making it work. So by pointing into it, imagine your fingers, the way they can kind of slot into each other. That's what you're allowing the hair to do. So when your client sort of washes it time and again, and more importantly, when she moves her head around and it falls back into place, um, that is down to making the haircut work. I'm going to show you a really cool way of checking it afterwards. Um, to do the little test to see if it's a good haircut. I like to kind of move the head around quite a lot and then make it drop back into place. I'm going to show you a trick I love to do. I'm using the mirror over here. Again, I'm not worried about the outline at all at this stage, okay? I like to tilt the head towards me, and you can do this in the salon as well on a client. Okay, you just tilt the head towards you, like so. And you comb the hair this way, okay, towards the front. And from about the temple area, you lift the hair, like so. You lift it up, you let the outline drop away, and you start to point very gently into the ends. Okay, and what this will do is when you let the hair go, it will just start to bevel under really nicely. You'll see, whoops, we got a fainter here. Okay. So basically here, by standing on the opposite side of the head, it's helping you elevate a little bit higher. Absolutely. And just kind of like whisper Let the, the edge off. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Just pointing into it. All right. This, I promise you, this was a game changer. When I started to do this, my graduated bob started to look really nice. All right. Again, I'm not worried at all about the outlines. That's the final bit. That's the fun bit, actually. That's the final bit. And um, without really preparing the internal shape and refining it all, you can't really be successful in your outlines, okay? That's a really interesting point there. If your shape is clean internally, then you do your outlines. Not only will it be a lot easier, but your shape will look fantastic. If your internal shape's not clean and you've got solid outlines, it, will look, it won't look very nice. Well, and you can start to make weird corners if you go in and do the outline and then come back and chop into the inside. Exactly. The two don't meet so, so beautifully. Is, exactly. This is interesting, guys. You saw how clean I cut it, but it actually looks soft, doesn't it? Okay, I haven't done a great deal of refining now. I'm going to kind of refine one side as I go along. So from here, I'm going to comb it down and I'm going to start to refine my outline. All right. So just comb it into place. And I'm sorry. 
I'm gonna go from here. Just really use the tips of the blade here and clean up the outline. All right. Now over here, I like to do this. I like to come through with sections at this stage. Tom Robbins has a question about graduation. If you were teaching a newbie, I'm so sorry. That's okay. But this is a good test because when you pick it back up, it should fall into place. This was part of the test, though, so let's have a look. See, luckily, the haircut's still working. Okay, so. You know what I always like to do? Here's my tip when you get these on the tripod, if you want to make sure they don't pop off, just give them one. Good. Uh, and that, like, locks them in really Good. tight. Yep. Okay, so I'm moving it over. Again, take a section. And this will allow you to come in underneath and just check that your line is nice and clean. Question from Tom Robbins that I was uh, addressing was, how do you describe the difference between internal graduation and external graduation? Is that something you talk about? <sighs> to be honest, it's a, it's a term that I heard a lot in my training. I just choose not to use that term because to me, essentially, it's the same thing. It's building weight, isn't it? And you could say external graduation is when the graduation's heavier, it's more towards the outline. To me, graduation is graduation, you know, and uh, I like to simplify it. And because I don't know about you guys at home, joining the discussion, did that term ever confuse you? And if it confuses you, we don't really need to talk about it, do we? Because graduation is graduation. So I'll be honest, in the mid-90s, when we were trying to add more and more terminology and technology to what we were doing, yeah. I think that's when we started talking about things like that a lot, like breaking things down and segmenting them. I don't think it necessarily makes it better. Yeah. Like you said, understanding graduation is graduation. You know, that the idea was like external was the weight would sit no higher than the occipital bone. Sure. Yeah. You know, where internal Sorry. the weight could sit, could continue to go up the head to above the parietal ridge. And these were just like things that we kept adding more and more. Yeah. And I see a big reflection of it in a lot of methodologies, uh, but I also agree with you that sometimes simple is better. Exactly. You know? And then allowing people to make their own discoveries. Exactly. And again, it's not wrong, but I think sometimes um, in the limited time that we can have, you kind of want to you know, explain, get people to understand and, you know, try to avoid confusion where you can. All right, guys, so I've done one side. I'm going to go straight onto the other side. Again, you'll see that it doesn't really take a huge amount of time at the end of the haircut. I'm demonstrating, I'm talking, I drop my mannequin, etc. <laughs> so hopefully you won't be as clumsy as me in the salon. Uh, I've never done that before in a, on a video, so that's quite cool. So here we are on the final finishing of this beautiful graduated bob cut by J. Mahmood on his Pivot Point Elise mannequin, uh, doing the final refining. We'll be wrapping up in just a few minutes, so yeah. if you have any last questions or comments, this would be a great time to hear them. Uh, Jay, it's been such a pleasure working with you, and I'm sure everyone is wondering how they can get in touch with you. So take us through the final wrap-ups here and let everyone know how they can hook up with you in 2019. Thank you so much. So in 2019, I'm going to continue to travel the world. I'm very fortunate I travel the world full-time. Um, I'm going to be in New York a lot next year, every other month, um, where you can learn haircuts like this. I've designed a brand new curriculum, which I'll be releasing around the world. Um, the next time I'm in New York is February. I've got a ladies' cutting course, classic cutting course, and a, a barbering course. Early Feb, get in touch. You can reach me on my Instagram, which is jmahmood, or Facebook, jmahmood education. Or if you're into emails, you know, we have to keep everyone happy. You can reach out on info at jmahmood.com. What if someone would like to write you a letter? You can write me a letter, <laughs> but that means I'd have to give out my address on, on Facebook. Huh? Stick to email. Okay, P.O. Box. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, P.O. Box. Post Box. Okay, guys, last section here, and then I'm going to refine the outline. And again, as Gerard's saying, we're probably five minutes away. Get the last sort of questions in. All right, so again, now I'm going to try not to drop my mannequin. All right, I'm going to... Yeah, once you give them that little, you know, they like lock in. Punch. I always kind of punch them once or twice, and the grooves inside here, you see how tight that is on he there? He punched it so hard, yeah. I tried to move it before, and I couldn't get it out, so <laughs> <laughs> I might need help afterwards. Yeah, that's my little trick, because there's grooves inside a pivot point tripod and a pivot point mannequin. Yeah. There's grooves on here, and then there's grooves in there, and if you get them to lock in, they usually locks in pretty tight. We just didn't give her the little 
pop on the head before. So Eduardo uh, Calasanti is wondering if you do a version of this on curly hair. Do you use oh, this technique? Man. Don't start me on curly hair. I love, love, love cutting curly hair. Because when I was younger, I wasn't very good at it. You know the old tension thing when you lose control of the length? I used to suffer from that, so it scared me. And now, for anybody who follows my work, I absolutely love cutting curly hair. But absolutely, you can do this shape. It looks stunning. Um, if you do this on curly hair, it looks great if you do it with sort of high tension and really let the hair bounce into shape. Do, do you kind of, you know, start with the first guide at a steeper angle to, you know, mm -hmm. how do you, like if you wanted this profile on yeah. curly hair, mm -hmm. do you kind of try to make the, you know, I'm just thinking of how I would tend to approach it, you know, allowing it kind of to shrink up a bit by cutting a steeper angle. Do you know what you can do, guys? I'll give you a tip on curly hair generally, and especially when you're doing graduation, use, um, use less elevation, okay? Even if you pull the hair down a lot more, you don't get weight lines on curly hair. So even if you did that, um, the hair would jump up nicely if you're worried about elevating too much. You can keep a nice amount of weight. Now, as you're uh, doing this little refining, is your hand traveling a little bit? Yeah. 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 So see this corner here? This is my outline. I'm trying not to mess with that. I'm just lifting the hair up and letting the length drop away each time. Right, guys. Filtering through the weight. Yeah, last couple of minutes. If you've got any questions, please get them in now and we will answer them. You can also. See how hard it was for you to pull it out? It's a good thing you worked out today. <laughs> okay, so, sorry. Okay, last couple of minutes and then I'm going to do one last thing to the outline and um, I'm going to be done. You have to give her a little punch so she doesn't pop off. I know. Jacinta is wondering, uh, would you use as much tension if you were working on curly hair? You can do. You can do. It's actually, I think once you become confident with curly hair, you can use a lot of tension. You just have to sort of try to calculate the, the length, amount. how yeah, much exactly. you're going to take off. Yeah, because yeah. it might, you know, what the spring factor is. Yeah. Take off a half an inch, it's two inches shorter. Take off an inch, it's three inches shorter. Exactly. So all I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm just going to skim the outline just with the clippers. Now, is that something you do? I mean, again, this could, could be one of those little controversies where there are some people who would say never use a, a clipper. Obviously, that's not part of your philosophy. If I'm honest with you, I'm going to be really honest, I'm not going to use this because it's not very good. It's my own personal clipper, <laughs> but for this, it's too flat. The actual blade's too flat. So, um, and if you did, I would never cut the outline in with, um, with a clipper. You're just using it to refine. Yeah, exactly. But now, why were you not liking using this one? It's too, I find that too it's small. quite flat, it's quite flat, the, um, the blade. So, let's just move the hair around, make sure the shape's working. Okay. And um, I like to do this, I like to do this test where you kind of move the hair around. You can't do this to clients, you can only do it to mannequins, so don't try this um, in the salon. And really, just move the hair around and then brush it into place. And if your shape goes back nicely into place, well then, I think you've done, you've done a good job. Well, you certainly have done a good job. That hair fell right back into place, Jay. Thank you to all the diehards and devoted fans. Thank you to Pivot Point for continuing to support our mission to help educate and bring great education to everyone. Uh, we'll be back real soon. We're always uh, bringing you more great education. So watch out for the next couple weeks between now and the holidays. I know it's a busy time in the salon, but very important to stay inspired. Jay, thank you so much. Thank you. Some final words for your friends out there? Guys, it's been a pleasure. Shout out to Gerard, Hairbrained. It's always a pleasure. I need to run and catch a plane. I'll see you in London. Thank you so Peace much. Peace out.